So about 17 years ago, um, I was working in restaurants and was looking to make a bit of a change and uh, my wife Blair uh, was working in another restaurant. A guy came in and he said, do you know anybody who would like to buy a bakery and uh, 10 acres and a house? And we were sort of looking to do something a little bit different. And so we said, sure, I'd be interested in checking it out. So we went up and talked to him, and I had been a chef, but never a baker, but right away I was really interested in the process and agreed to, to give it a go. So we said, okay, we've got three weeks to, to learn how to bake. And so we got together with him, and um, <clears throat> he taught us how to fire the wood-fired oven, to mix, to bake, to shape, do QuickBooks, to do everything. And so we closed and just took it over. And right away, Blair started to do the baking side and I was doing the mixing side. We would both shape and then um, after we were done with the bake, we would head out to deliver. So um, that's how it all started. But because we were new to it all, um, we reached out to other wood-fired bakeries who were doing a similar kind of thing. And so we would go and visit them and have them visit us and ask them how they would um, uh, what kind of breads they would bake, what type of, uh, how they would fire their oven, and um, uh, created sort of a community of friends who all did the same sort of work. Well, <clears throat> after about five years, that first oven fell apart, and we had to build another one, so we worked on talking to all of our friends how to improve and um, uh, what they would change for the wood-fired oven. So we found a, found a guy who had some experience with ovens and worked with him to design and build a newer version of our oven that was more suited to higher production and more ergonomic. Um, and we built that and then that whole community of bakers started to come around again and ask us, oh, you know, how'd you do that oven? And, and several of those friends ended up having those same ovens built. They were called uh, Turtle Rock masonry ovens. So <clears throat> we got pretty comfortable with that and about, um, I guess it's about seven years ago now, one of my friends, Dave Bauer, who, has farm and, who had Farm and Sparrow Bakery, had the same oven. And he had always uh, stone milled all of his flour and used local grains. And so I called him up and I said, hey, I'd, I'd be really interested in getting a mill. Can you tell me what size I should get and um, wh what, how I should get into it? And he said, well, I've really been looking for someone who could um, <clears throat> build their own mill using natural granite stones and a slow turning horizontal style and knew that I had that experience with the oven design and figured I'd, be, I'd, I'd take the bait and be interested in taking the project on. So. I started reading old books and looking at other mill designs in Europe and the U.S. Um, ordered some stones and built our first mill. Um, took about six months to get it built and working until we finally started to use it in our bakery. And again, that same community of friends and bakers all over the um, U.S. started to say, hey, can we come check out your mill? So. Um, uh, they came back to visit, and, and sooner, sooner than later, they said, hey, would you build a mill for me? And so I agreed to build one for my friend Grayson down in Belgard Bakery, and then another friend out in Victoria, and then now we're at almost 150 mills later. <laughs> We've shipped them all over the U.S. and Canada and to Australia, the U.K., you know, all over the place. For the most part, um, it's uh, people seeing, um, seeing a model of, of a bakery doing this kind of work. And, and in a lot of ways, uh, what we've done with Elmore Mountain Bread is tried to set up a model to show that you can um, operate a small bakery making high quality bread using local grain that's fresh stone ground and, and, and feeding your community. And uh, since so many people have come to visit, <laughs> that word spreads, and, and I think that's why, why so many people know about us. The place where we source our granite from is in, in Barrie, Vermont, which is about 45 minutes from here. And um, 
there's a, a very large quarry that's been quarrying granite out of there for close to 250 years. And one of the early quarries is actually called Millstone Hill because in the late, early 1800s, that's one of the things that they quarried was, was millstones. And so we were kind of the first ones to <laughs> bring that back. I looked at a bunch of old books that I got from, um, there's a place called the Society for the Preservation of Old Mills, and um, they work to preserve these historic mills, and they also reprinted a number of books that um, uh, were written 100, 150 years ago about it. And so I read through a lot of those books on how to cut the stone, how to um, do the pattern, how to maintain it, how the whole, whole machine works. We get the stones cut into a disc and planed flat, and then um, we draw the pattern in and cut the pattern and then rough it, rough it in. It's important not to overheat the flour for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that um, if you heat it beyond a certain point, you'll start to degrade the, um, the oils in it and the flour will turn rancid more quickly. Um, also, if you heat the flour up too much, it'll actually start to stick to the millstone and cause a big mess. <laughs> you'll have to um, clean it out. Um, and, uh, and it also affect just the aroma and the flavor if it's heated up too much. I would say that um, so many things in the culinary and food world, um, people were looking for more connection to their food and want to know more of the story of where their food comes from and make sure that it's um, either organic or sustainable um, and local came into that as well. And uh, we were getting it in our tomatoes and our eggs and our meat, but it hadn't happened in grain. And so I think part of that was just people saying, you know, where does all of our food come from? And, and grains now on the, on the forefront of, of uh, one, you know, among those foods. The idea of freshness in flour is, is, is a big idea too, in that most people think of flour as, yeah, like you said, a white commodity. Um, staple that um, uh, is just it's just always the same and the idea that flour can have different flavors and aromas and that that flavor um, needs to be used when it is fresh is a is a new, new a newer idea if people ask me why they should uh, look for fresh milled flour and fresh milled whole grain flour um, it, it's, it's, you could compare it to um, coffee in that um, so many people have, don't think twice about milling their own coffee or grinding their own coffee every morning. Whereas before you used to get your coffee out of a can and it was months and months old. Um, <clears throat> once you know how good foods can taste and that they can taste better, I, I think a lot of people will seek that out. Um, and bakers um, who are really um, into the craft of baking and trying to make the best bread because almost every time you bake a loaf of bread it's a little bit different and every time you do that you always are striving to make it as good or better as than the time you baked it, bef baked it before and so if there's something as simple as the, the main ingredient in bread which is the flour um, can be made so much better just by using it fresh and using it whole. Um, I think that's a that's a an, an easy and, and, and important uh, improvement on your bread. When you start to use fresh milled flour and fresh milled whole grain flour, there are certain techniques and, and challenges that come with that. Um, being a baker before I was a mill builder and miller. Um, I'm able to share that experience with my customers so that they can um, ask me questions to say, how, you know, this flour is, is um, fermenting quite a bit faster or this flour takes a lot more water and I can share that experience and help them to, um, to learn how to make best use of it. One of the challenge, challenges, we were just talking about this yesterday actually, that um, we've become so accustomed to recipes with exact measurements and <clears throat> um, a method for sure, but um, you know.
know, one cup of this, two cups of that, and you don't deviate from that. And that's following a recipe, but that's not necessarily cooking or baking. And so I think there's a lot of knowledge and trial and error that has to happen with bakers to say, okay, maybe I don't need to follow this recipe exactly. Maybe I should just use a little bit of my intuition and, and, and practice and skill to be able to um, to work with these different flowers and to, to cook all kinds of things because <clears throat> if everything's the same all the time, <laughs> it kind of makes it a little bit boring. Um, it's nice to be predictable in some things, but, um, but uh, it's important to teach people how, how to cook and how to bake. I think it's important that when people are asked why should I buy local grain or why should I look to source my grain from a farm, um, what, are the, what are the important reasons for doing that? And of course, we've, we've talked about the fresh milled and, um, and the flavor and the aroma, but a big part of a, a local grain economy is that um, those organic farmers are not just making food, but they're doing what they do to build soil and to build a healthy ecosystem and a healthy farm system um, so that it's, it's uh, sustainable and, and healthy for the future. Uh, you can mill um, all kinds of small grains, so that would be wheat, rye, barley, spelt, hammer, einkorn. Um, do rice, you can milk corn um, into cornmeal or polenta. Um, the only thing you wouldn't want to mill would be oil seeds, so sesame, sunflower, um, uh, nuts. Um, you wouldn't want to mill any of those kind of things because they'd turn into um, peanut butter or tahini <laughs> instead of flour. A typical, um, I wouldn't say that there's a typical customer. It seems like we have bakeries of all bakeries and restaurants and mills of all all sorts of styles trying to come up with uh, ways to integrate fresh milled flour into their into their products that's things from um, pasta companies who are making fresh pasta um, and they want to <clears throat> use use the fresh flour um, and mill it themselves we have um, artisan mills that are creating regional small mills. Um, then we'll have <clears throat> some smaller, more craft bakeries like our bakery, Elmore Mountain Bread. But then we'll also have quite large bakeries like um, Seven Stars down in Providence. That's a very large um, wholesale bakery that um, mills all of their whole grain flours fresh and sources their grain from, from New England as well. to fresh milling, um, a lot of people are talking about what the timeline is for fresh milled, whether that's milled within three months or one month, a week or a day. Um, <clears throat> because wheat is, as a whole seed, is so shelf stable, um, it has a lot of potential energy, right, because it's a seed. If you put it in the ground and water it, it's going to grow and release that energy. If you take that wheat and you crush it, um, the energy is going to be released as well as the flavors and aromas that are inherent in that seed. And so the sooner you can um, mill it and bake it and get it into your mouth, I think that is going to capture the most uh, flavor and aroma that that seed inherently has in it. I guess just as a as an individual, I'm always seeking to challenge myself and learn more. And when I went from baking to milling, all of a sudden this whole other layer of of understanding and uh, education uh, was put in front of me. And then to go beyond that and to work with farmers and to figure out what they do and what they need um, <clears throat> expanded that even more. And so now I've been learning about growing and, and you know what what farmers need and, and how their systems work um, and so where's it gonna go I guess um, 
my overall goal with New American Stone Mills was to make a tool for bakers or millers or farmers or, or cooks who, who want to um, take raw grain and be able to use it in many different ways. And the mill is the tool to connect, you know, the farm, the farmer with the baker and then eventually the consumer. Um, and so the goal has been to build this community of like-minded individuals to sort of um, bring that to their customers.